Good morning, dear students. Uh, my name is Farhan Mazar, and today is 23rd of April 2022. Right now, I am with the 11th Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is Physics 5054. Today, we have set our hearts to solve an alternative to practical paper. We call it ATP paper. We also call it paper four. Today, we have selected May, June 2015. Uh, 4-2 paper. This paper, ATP paper, this paper 4 belongs from the zone 2, or you can say the variant 2. The time allowed for this ATP paper is 1 hour. So let's start this paper. So my dear students, May, June 2015, 4-2 paper is showing up on your screen. This is a paper 4 ATP paper. And the time allowed is one hour, so let's start this paper. So the question number one is coming up on your screen. He says that two students decide to mark out a 100 meter length to use as a running track on a school field. One student decides to measure the average length of one of his strides and then pace out 100 meter. The student is shown walking in the figure 1.1. So here they have shown a student, he has, uh, he's, he's, he's walking, and this is his one stride. On the figure 1.1, mark and label the length L of the one stride. So in one step, how much he moves, that is one stride. So from heel of this fit to the heel of this fit. Draw a line here and mark it with the L. That's the first question they are asking. And let me show you how I have done this. So here you can see I have marked that length with the L, with the blue color line. I hope you can see that. Okay. Then he says, estimate the value for the length L of the stride of the student. Here you don't have to measure that blue arrow. Here you have to estimate an actual stride of the student. That when you move one step, how much distance is covered? You have to estimate the actual thing. Don't take a scale and start measuring that. So we suppose that when I take a step, it's approximately half of the meter. It's approximately 50 centimeter long. So here we go. So my, my idea is then when somebody takes a stride of my height, so the, so the distance covered is like 50 centimeter. So then their question is, uh, they are asking us, okay, using uh, your value for the L, calculate the number of the stride the student takes when walking 100 meter. So each stride is of uh, 0.5 meter, 50 centimeter means uh, 0.5 meter. So 100 meter will take how many strides? So you will divide the 100 meter uh, with the 0.5 meter and you will get 200. So there will be 200 strides. So let me show you my solution. Okay, so here on your screen, my solution is showing up. Strides will be equals to 100 meter divided by 0 0.5 meter. 0 0.5 meter is the approximate uh, length of your stride. So with 50 centimeter means 0 0.5 meter. So it will be 200 strides. So then, Then they say the second student uses a trundle wheel. Trundle wheel is basically this wheel and here you have a handle. So you take this, uh, this instrument, trundle wheel, and you walk. And when you walk, uh, whenever this wheel will complete one revolution on the ground, it will produce a sound of a click. So when it completes one revolution, it com uh, here you can see here the markings are done. So when you have completed one complete cycle, uh, one complete revolution of this wheel, and it will produce a click. And that means that the, on the level ground, you have covered horizontally 50 centimeter. So his question is explain how a trundle wheel is used to measure the distance of 100 meter for the track. So the student will hold this trundle wheel uh, like in figure 1.2, and it will start moving from the starting point. And he will count how many clicks have been produced. So when 200 clicks, because in one click and the click is produced when one 
uh, uh, one revolution is completed by that wheel. And uh, when you have counted 100 clicks, then you have moved 100 meters because in, after each click, it covers a distance of 50 centimeter. So when you will have completed 200 clicks, you will start counting. And when it will be 200 clicks, then it means that uh, you have covered a distance of 100 meter. Count the clicks produced by the trundle wheel. 200 clicks mean 100 meter. In, in, in the lapse of click, one click to the other click, it covers a 50 centimeter distance on the horizontal ground. Then, Explain why this is a more accurate method of measuring a distance of 100 meters than the method in the first part. The method in the first part where you, do, uh, you estimated the strides, you see the length of the stride was an estimation. And when you walk, it's not necessary that every time the stride has the same length. That's why this trundle wheel is more accurate method. Length of the stride is an estimation, not an exact value. Okay, so here we go to the markings. So you can see the marking scheme of the question number one is showing up on your screen. You can pause the video. I have already uh, checked my answer with this marking scheme. So they are good, but you can do a good thing that you can pause the video and you can have a look at this marking scheme and you can write and you can read the answers of the question number one. A student investigates how the area of the parachute affects the time taken for it to fall. The student cuts a square from, a, from an A4 a sheet of paper to make the parachute. It attaches the parachute a, to an eraser using two pieces of the, of the thin string of equal length as shown in the figure 2.1. Uh, an A4 sheet of paper is the same size as one page of the examination paper. So, so from here, from the ceiling, he will drop this. And this is the eraser. These are the strings. Here is that paper. And it will take some time and it will touch the ground, the floor. The student holds the top of the parachute against the ceiling. He releases the parachute and measures the time T it takes for the eraser to hit the floor. The student makes the parachute from a square of paper offside. 21 centimeter. He obtains the following five values of the T my year in second. So 1.25 second, 1.29 second, 1.31 second, 1.22 seconds, 1.27 seconds. Calculate the T average. The average value for the T gave your answer to two decimal places. So you have here five values of that time for the fall. So uh, just add them and divide them with the, their sum with the five. So you will get the average. So here we go. So the T average will be equals to the 1.25 plus 1.29 plus 1.31 plus 1.22 plus 1.27 equals to divided by five equals to, and that will be 1.268 because he said that give your answer to two decimal places. So our answer will be 1.27 seconds. Hopefully you understand this question. So because we have done this numerical, so let's check it from the marking scheme as well. 1.27 second is the right answer, sir. Okay. Then the question suggests the reason why the value for the T average is not given to more than two decimal places. If you, you, have the, if you look at the data which you have used to find the T average values, all those values are up to two decimal places. And they have large variation between them. So that's why I, I cannot take uh, the T average value more than two decimal places. So let me show you my answer. Uh, value in data, values in data are up to two decimal places and they have large variation with each other. So then their question is, uh, let me show you the marking scheme. It says large variation in the raw data, data to two decimal places, time to fall varies. Okay, so now the next thing,
He says, so that's the reason why the distance that the parachute falls is chosen to be as large as possible. You see, uh, when you drop the when you drop this parachute and eraser, you start the stopwatch, and when it touches the ground, you stop the stopwatch. So uh, it is very important that the time of fall should be uh, quite large as compared to the reaction time. So uh, we always drop it from uh, the distance should be very large, quite large, so that the time of fall is large, so that the uh, the the react time of fall and due to the reaction time, there will be no error created. So hopefully you understand. So let me show you my written answer and I will explain it again. Allowed time for parachute to inflate large times more repeatable, minimize percentage error in the time, minimize the effect of the human reaction error. So let me read my answer. The time of fall will become larger. Reaction time will be small proportion uh, of uh, the time of the fall. So this will reduce the error which is created due to the re reaction time. So hopefully you understand it's a technical answer. This one number is difficult to get because you have to write a very technical thing. Okay, now, the length L of the side of the parachute is 21 centimeter. Calculate the area A of the paper that you used to make the parachute because it is in the shape of a square. So if one side is L, uh, L is 21, the other side will be also 21. So just multiply 21 with the 21 and you will get the area. So let me show you. So the area will be equal to the length multiply length that will be 21 multiply 21 and that will be 441 centimeter square. Okay. Then they ask a question, suggest a reason why the student cannot make a parachute with an area greater than your answer to A part when using the sheet of uh, A4 paper. You see the A4 paper, the length of the A4 paper is 21 centimeter. So because he has only one paper, so he cannot make a, a, a bigger a paper whose dimensions are larger than 21 centimeter because that's the maximum length of the A4 size paper. A4 paper length is 21 centimeters, so cannot make length larger than 21 centimeter with a single A4 paper. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. Larger square from A4 uh, sheet of the paper is 21 centimeter wide. If greater area used, it won't be a square. You see the maximum square which you can cut off, uh, cut out of uh, A4 size paper is of 21 centimeter. The student repeats the experiment for different values of the L. The results obtained are recorded in the figure 2.2. On the figure 2.2, write uh, your values of A and T average for that L is equal to 21. So the T average was 1.27, write it here and then find the areas. So this area will be 21 multiplied 21. This will be 20 multiplied 20. This will be 18 multiplied 18. This will be 16 multiplied 16. This will be 14 multiplied 14. And this will be 12 multiplied 12. So these are the two parts. Let me show you. So you can see I have completed the table, I have found the area, and I have also written the T average value for the L equals to 21. The T average value will be 1.27 seconds. Okay.
Then he says on the figure 2.3 plot the graph for t average on the y axis against the a in centimeter square on the x axis. Start your axis from 100 comma 0.7. Draw the straight line of the best fit. So you can see on the x axis is starting from 100 on the y axis it is starting from 0 0.7. And this is the data which we have to plot there. So on the y-axis, T average is represented on the x-axis, A in centimeter square is represented. First of all, I will label the axis. So you can see here, I have labeled it as area in centimeter square. Here I labeled it T average in seconds. The value 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450. Here it started from 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. And then I will plot this graph. And it at 441, it is 1.27. At 441, it is 1.27. Here we go. And at 400, it is 1.19. At 324, it is 1.11. At 256, it is 1.01. 1 .01. At 196, it is 0.97. At 144, it is 0.89. So plot these points. Then you have to draw the line of best fit. You have to draw a line which is in this pattern. And it, 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 you draw it in such a way. The number of the points which are left on one side of the line should be equal to the number of the points which are left on the other side of the line. So you can see two points are here, two points are here. So it's good to go. So I've drawn this line. Then the question is uh, when, let me show from there. When extended the line of best fit does not go through the origin zero comma zero explain why. So when this uh, the line the graph will pass through the zero when the graph will pass from the this is not zero comma zero so somewhere here we have zero comma zero so when this if if this graph will go up to zero comma zero which means zero means uh, in the x axis zero means that the area of the parachute is zero when the area of the parachute will be zero it means there will be no parachute with that eraser. Origin 0, 0, means that there will be no parachute attached to the eraser. Marking scheme. So the marking scheme for the question number two is showing up and so Uh, the marking scheme of the question number two B part is showing up on your screen. You can pause this video and take your time. It's a 13 marks question. The question number two, you can pause the video and you can look at the marking scheme. I have already checked my answers with the marking scheme. So I'm going to the next question. He says a student uses a cathode ray oscilloscope to measure a voltage in the space below, draw a circuit diagram containing a battery, a switch, a fixed resistor, and a variable resistors all connected in series. So here we go. So here you can see I've drawn, uh, this is the battery, this is the switch. Here we have a fixed resistor, here we have a variable resistor. The CRO is used to measure the voltage across the fixed resistor. On your circuit diagram, label the two points A and B where the CRO is to be connected. Because we want to find out the resistance across the fixed resistor. So from start and end of this resistor, I will take out the points and connect them to the CRO. A and B will be here. So the question number three, A and B part. Okay. C part. He says the figure 3.1 shows the CRO 
screen when the switch in the socket is open and you see this dot is instead of being on the center it is here there are four control knobs on the cro screen x shift y shift y gain time base state which control knob is adjust to move the dot to the center of the screen as shown in the figure you see uh, the x shift is used to move the dot uh, horizontally left to right the y shift knob is used to move the trace on the cro screen from top to bottom or from bottom to top vertically y gain is basically uh, the scale for the y axis on the screen of the cro and the time base is basically the scale for the x axis of the screen of the cro Y shift is the answer. The Y gain is set at two volts per division with the dot in the center of the screen. The switch is then closed and the dot moves to the position shown in the figure 3.2. Calculate the voltage VAB across the fixed resistor. <clears throat> so I will increase this diagram so you can see more clearly. So it's uh, one square completed, 1.2, 1.4, and 1.6. So the reading is 1.6. So the Y gain is two volts per division. So this is 1.6. So 1.6 multiplied two. That will be 3.2. The resistance of the variable resistor is reduced. State what happens to the dot on the screen. So when you will, the resistance of variable resistor is reduced. Let me take out that. The resistance of the variable resistor is reduced. State what happens to the dot on the screen because this uh, dot is representing the voltage drop across the fixed resistor. So if the variable resistance resistance is decreased, then this voltage will go up. Dot on the screen will move up. Dot moves up. Yes, that's the question number three. Now we are moving to the next question. The next question is question number four. You are asked to take a set of readings to plot a cooling curve that shows how quickly hot water in a test tube cools. You are given a test tube about half full of the hot water. List the additional apparatus you need. Uh, we will need the rear thought stand and we will need, uh, uh, obviously, a test tube. We will need a thermometer. We will need the stopwatch. A retort stand, stopwatch, thermometer. These are the basic, basic things you need. Then he says, In the space below, draw a diagram of the apparatus showing the position of the eye when taking the reading. Okay, so very simple. You can see the diagram is showing up on your screen and you can see we have shown a test tube that is filled with the hot water. We have taken a thermometer that our thermometer's bulb is immersed in that hot water and we have used a retort stand. The eye must be here to the level where the mercury is and you have to take the reading.
Then we have figure 4.1 is the top of a table for the readings, complete the reading headings in the table. So uh, here I will put the time, time in minutes, and here I will put the temperature. I will note down the temperature with the passage of time. Time in minutes and temperature in degree centigrade. Then their question is, so there's two ways in which the apparatus is arranged to make the readings more accurate. Thermometer reading for initial temperature should be taken few moments later after putting the thermometer in the beaker of the hot water. Okay, so when you have put the thermometer in the hot water, you do not take the reading immediately. You let the mercury reach its maximum height and then you note down that reading. Thermometer should not touch the bottom of the beaker. This is also a good precaution. So let me show you. So uh, we have checked the marking scheme for the thermometer, stopwatch, stop clock, timer, diagram of the test tube containing water, thermometer with the bulb in the water, I drawn level with the top of the thread, temperature and the time. Any two sensible points, for example, time close to the test tube, see both the together test tube in the Clamp the thermometer in the clamp stand thermometer with the scale facing you, two people with explanation. Clamp not obscuring the reading thermometer, not touching the sides, bottom of the one by three or one by two, the thermometer immersed, parallax error avoided. So my dear students, we are done with this paper. So, uh, my dear students, today we have solved May, June 2015, 4-2 paper. And I have tried my best to explain you the concepts of this paper. If you find this video interesting and informative and helping you to do the uh, physics past paper practice, do share the uh, link of this video onto your Facebook accounts, onto your Instagram accounts, and onto your Twitter accounts. And keep working hard and keep learning from my videos. It's a great blessing for me to teach you online. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Go.